Hello all! Rick here once more with a video on another starship, this time one of the few vessels that deviate from standard Federation designs by having four warp nacelles instead of the usual two. As always, we'll begin with looking into the real origins of the Cheyenne class. The design for this vessel came about as a kit bash to create a background model for the debris and wreckage of the Battle of Wolf 359, where a Borg cube swept through a Starfleet defensive line, and the USS Awane NCC 73620 was one of the casualties. This model was made with a Galaxy class saucer section, as had ships like the Nebula and Freedom class but it received some slight alterations, such as the enlarging of the windows to make it appear of smaller proportions than the galaxy. The model creator was Ed Mirecki. Now, this is the fun part. The nacelles that the Cheyenne class had are different from many other designs from the past and present Trek nacelles, and this is because they are pens. Yep, they're a certain square-shaped marker pen with the lid on, coloured in Starfleet style. The grills behind the ram scoops are the grips. Four of these glued onto the pylons and there you go, the ship was created. The connecting pylons do most of the work here to unify the design. I think for such a funny origin, it actually comes off as a very cohesive vessel. It was created at the same time as the Springfield class, another background kitbash vessel for the remains of the fleet. So this is one of those starships that despite being canon and appearing in the shows, it never received much attention or lore. Pretty much none on screen, and very little in other licensed works, but I'll put together what I can. The vessel was designed based on the Galaxy Class project, which as mentioned in its dedicated video, had the dubious honour of the longest development period of any starship at the time. This meant that there were a myriad of vessels that branched out from that project as innovations were made in it, taking a bit of inspiration here and there, and the Cheyenne was one such class. Other ships that sprung out of the Galaxy class are easy to identify for sharing the same sort of wide saucer look and hull patterning, like the Nebula class. The Galaxy saucer section was used as the basis for the Cheyenne, but early enough from its design that the resulting saucer only really bears a similar bridge design and shape. The Cheyenne is a lot smaller. So it's not like the galaxy frame was copied one to one, but the galaxy style inspiration is there in the neck designs too. The Cheyenne began work in 2345. The biggest focus of this project was to devise a new long-term explorer, similar to the galaxy class, but following the legacy of design that was set down from the constellation class before it with four nacelles. The ship was 362 meters long, 260 wide and 113 metres tall, and weighed over a million metric tonnes. Its crew complement was around 320 individuals, although it could operate with far less. The first of its line was the USS Cheyenne, launched around 2347, and without much issue. It must have performed well because the line was in full production until 2352, when the final of its class was launched. There were no plans to revive the line or manufacture more over time, but the class was a robust one that saw some last into the early 25th century despite not receiving the updates and limelights that ships like the Galaxy or Nebula saw. The warp core was rated similarly to the Galaxy classes too with a cruise speed of warp 6, which it could maintain for as long as it had the deuterium to burn. However, the Galaxy class would initially struggle to reach warp 9.2, before later tinkering allowed for 9.8 at its limits, while the Cheyenne launched with the ability to reach 9.6. The advantages of having more nacelles was primarily the ability to travel at warp speeds for longer. 
employing a technique known as warp coasting. This is where the warp drive alternates power between the upper and lower pairs, transferring power as one pair of nacelles approaches its limits, so rather than a fast sprinter, the Cheyenne was a marathon runner that could maintain warp for far longer, allowing it to explore into the deep reaches of space. Like all Starfleet vessels, it was armed with their trademark phaser technology, in this case two primary Type 8 phaser strips on the saucer section, giving it nearly full coverage. Later designs show it to also have four additional smaller arrays on the pylons, supplementing its blind spots created by the nacelle positioning, but these were not present on the original design. It also has two torpedo launchers, one fore and one aft. Firepower was not its strong suit, it was after all an exploratory vessel of moderate power. It had standard deflector shielding, and the primary deflector array seems to not actually be firmly established, with several designs showing it in various formats, one located on the underside of the saucer, and another having them under the hull at the pinnacle of the nacelle tower. Now according to some, it also had the ability to saucer separate, but as the Galaxy class was the first to have this function be reversible, it implies that the Cheyenne's separation was more akin to the emergency jettisoning that other vessels employed. It did retain a captain's yacht on the underside of the saucer, and a shuttle bay at the rear of the vessel covering two decks in line with the impulse engines. The complement is not stated, but it looks to be able to hold at least six shuttlecraft, and the same again in shuttle pods. That is a guess. All in all, the Cheyenne class revolved around its four nacelle design to test out new iterations of the warp coasting design fueled by the next generation of technology. Aside from that, it really was a pretty run-of-the-mill Starfleet exploratory cruiser. Armaments were light, maximum speed was reasonable, and the only other claim to success it has is its lifespan, considering they are still in operation seeing even the Galaxy class enter retirement ahead of it. The fauna cell design would not be something left behind by Starfleet either, the Sagan class picking up the next era of this profile with an advanced scientific loadout. Although this unique warp design does work, the Starfleet would more often opt to just create faster vessels, like the Intrepid, Odyssey and Constitution Mark III, instead of these slower but steady vessels. However, such systems still have their place in the fleet, as we see it return with every generation of innovations in warp, and the Cheyenne is merely the 2350s era contribution to furthering the four nacelle design. Thanks for watching this video on this background class of Starship, it's one of several that came out of the development of the Galaxy class, and in time I'll cover those too. But until then, I've been Rick, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for another lore video. Thanks again, and goodbye.